But I read over the weekend uh, some stuff out of stuff about glaciers around the world melting at remarkable rates. And then I saw Ian comment on it and uh, it was funny as hell. Um, the counterfactual, and uh, look, I've yet to see him proved wrong on this stuff and he would just keep on moving the goalposts. Uh, but to explain this latest piece of climate change nonsense, uh, we are joined again by Ian Wishart. G'day, mate. How are you? Good morning, Sean. How's things? Bloody good. Um, all these glaciers, it's a worry. Firstly, just let's go to the source. What is the story published, I think it was, by Stuff, uh, that got you interested about the glacial melt? Yeah, Stuff published a story based on uh, research in the last ice age in Europe and uh, showing that... Um glaciers are capable of retreating at up to 600 metres per day, which is a very, very, very fast rate of uh, retreat. And I was saying it could be catastrophic for the Antarctic glaciers, which could do the same thing. What they did is, in the story on stuff, they uh, talked about the Thwaites and Pope glaciers in, in Antarctica and how they have record moving past retreating glaciers. What I was staggered by, however, when I read the story is there was no mention of the volcanoes underneath those particular glaciers. In, in Europe and or they, in the Antarctica? Antarctica. So the um, it's been dishonest. We've known about uh, glacial acti- sorry volcanic activity under the glacier since 2008, and the New Zealand media still consistently ignore it. And it's it's being turned up in uh, international studies now outside of the New Zealand science community as being probably the main contributor of melting. So, so Ian, hang on, I'm just trying to get my head around this. And I'm sorry, I have always been under the impression that these were just all about ice and water. There was no other factor. But you're telling yeah, me these we, glaciers have, and volcanoes, forgive my fifth form science, they're hot, aren't they? They can be warm. <laughs> Very hot. Basically, the, the, the vine that the New Zealand science community is, is pushing, this is the uh, Victoria University Antarctic Research Centre, Niwa, James Shaw, everyone in the climate community, is that CO2 and methane emissions are the driving force behind glacier melt in Antarctica. Now, the key area of melt in Antarctica is the West Antarctic Ice Sheet, West Antarctic Peninsula. It's, it's warmer than, than other areas of Antarctica, and uh, the, the glaciers are melting faster. The conventional wisdom that they tell you is that uh, CO2 forcing on the sea surface is somehow dissipating through two kilometres of seawater to melt the glaciers underneath, right at the base of the, the, the glacier where it sits on the seabed. However, what the scientists have found since 2008, increasingly, is that there are 91 volcanoes underneath the West Antarctic ice sheet under, under these fastest-moving glaciers. And they appear to be heating up the ice from underneath, so it's slip sliding its way to the to the to the sea and uh, melting there. There's nothing that you and I can do about Antarctic glacial ice melt if it's been caused by volcanoes. Well, we could mind. go down there and tell those bloody volcanoes to just cut it out. <laughs> we could. The problem is that the thing that really gets me is the, is the New Zealand media and the science community willfully uh, hiding this this fact from the public. Climate editors for staff and elsewhere should know about these studies internationally about uh, volcanoes yeah. under the ice. They should know the implications. They're just not publishing the details. And it's dishonest journalism. Yeah, uh, absol- absolutely. I-, I-, I agree, Ian. But that seems to be the norm these days, to be honest. We've just had most of the show this morning talking about a, a completely false and created story on Radio New Zealand about the police and the rainbow community. Um, yeah, well, this is the thing. It's, it's, we're living in a strange age, but I'm putting together a full report on the volcanics, volcanoes under the uh, Antarctic yeah. ice for release later in, later in the day. But uh, one of the key things that interests me is that when you go through the UN IPCC report, they also appear to be part of the, the big lie. The AR6 report released uh, last year makes no mention in a, a major chapter on Antarctic ice melt on the Thwaites Glacier, no mention at all of geothermal energy, despite the fact that nature... Science Journal has got numerous studies about the, the volcanoes under the ice melting it. So it's just it's just incredible the lengths that these people will go to to mislead the public. Jeez. Ian, can I ask you too, getting back to Gabriel, and I think your very successful argument against the narrative that was created, have Niwa come back and in any way actually addressed the facts that you put before them? No, there's not been one uh, argument of substance brought up against those pieces that we've done, um, including the latest ones on the uh, hottest temperature records and, and so forth. They're, they're just absolutely silent. The word that I've had back is that uh, they're aware of the, 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 the facts that I've, I've brought out, but uh, they just don't want to address them. Wow. 
Wow. And Ian, what sort of general response are you getting? And this is really good. Can I just say again, this is really good journalism you're doing. Are people interested? Well, people are interested. I mean, I'm not a climate denier per se. If, if the evidence strongly showed that uh, our world was warming catastrophically and that uh, the implications of the catastrophic warming... You'd be the first to person to say... Yeah, I'd be the first person. I, I have a track record of, of changing my mind if the evidence necess necessitates it on, on various issues. So I follow the evidence where it leads. But the evidence that they're presenting to the public via the media is not convincing in the slightest. On the Nebo extreme weather, we had 20 times more extreme weather in our cold, low-carbon past. So that sort of puts the lie to the theory that uh, climate change is going to lead... Uh, inexorably to massive extreme weather because our weather was far worse than the colder past. The temperature records that NEWA has, every time they, they trot out hottest day, hottest year, whatever, I found that their temperature data is incomplete. It's unreliable. So, And I've proven that the, the temperature data they do have is, is wrong as well. So the, the problems for the entire narrative are the, the poster, child's, poster children for this, for this crisis are falling down. You have the, the extreme weather doesn't stack up. The temperature records don't stack up, and now the Antarctic ice melt doesn't stack up. And the problem is that we're being asked to spend trillions of dollars globally on, on solving this problem when these things may not be able to be solved. Yep, I hear you. I hear you, Ian. I thank you very much indeed, mate, um, for joining us again. Um, well, can we share and get up when you get that report out later today? Yeah, it'll be on investigatemagazine.co.nz later today and on the Twitter feed if those people are following it and uh, Facebook. And, of course, the platform, you can uh, grab it from there. Good on you, Ian. Thank you so much, mate. Always good talking. That is uh, Ian Wishart, the founder, editor, creator of Investigate Magazine and just doing amazing work, really, Ian, with scientific facts. And here's the problem. Here's the problem we're really facing. If you look at all of this together... Everything we've been talking about this morning, and I guess it's my passion, and maybe I get a little bit uh, too focused on it. The fourth estate, the news media are meant to speak for you. We are meant to be the town square when ideas can be openly discussed. People can have arguments. People can discuss, and it's an open forum. But it seems increasingly that our fourth estate, certainly our traditional media, our mainstream media, our legacy media, are captured they are divorced from and separate from the people whose voices they should, whose minds they should be informing and voices they should be listening to. They are captured, it seems to me.